We're back again. You're back. I'm back. Thanks for joining me. If you would like to support me, you can head over to my Patreon. You can get extended versions of these episodes and some bonus content, as well as tons of other kinds of content that I make for my patrons. Today, I am joined again by the very, very lovely Laura Spencer. Laura Spencer. Ashley Clements. And this um, is like the it. Look Back Diaries. No, I have to say, my name is Ashley Clem. Oh, and my name is Laura Spencer. And now sing it. And this is the Look Back Diaries. There's no way anyone else is going to sing me a better theme song than that. Thank there you, you go. They always said I was the singer of the sisters, so I'm glad that's being featured. <laughs> that's an inside joke. Um... I mean, in as much as you just don't call yourself a singer. Um, or, or it's not an inside joke, it's because you and Mary Kate are such good singers, and I am not. No inside um, track about that. Just the truth. I wonder if we have inside jokes from the Lizzie Bennett Diaries that we remember. I mean, I'm sure we, I'm sure we, we remember did at the them time. They we would remember. They came up. Sure. We were young. <laughs> We're still young. <laughs> but we were younger. That's just all the commentary. We were 10 years younger. That's we our commentary. 10 years younger. I mean, it's so, it is so funny because I remember people in real life and then also in the comments, people would ask me about my skincare regimen. And now I just want to say um, I was young and genetic. <laughs> like, I had the elixir of youth. I had the elixir of youth and, and good genes. So people would be like, oh, what products do you use? And I'd be like, this like cheap drugstore thing. And they'd be like, I don't like, think that's and like, the answer. like bar of soap. Youth. <laughs> <laughs> youth is the answer. We were cute. And in some ways, though, I also am like, oh, it's just so awkward. Oh, come on now. We're not using these look back diaries to hate on oneself. No, no. And I have advocated strongly, but it, it is like, it's, it just feels like looking back on like, oh, look at little baby Ashley. That's how I feel about photos from that time of all of us. Mm -hmm. Just like, wow. Babies. Well, and also babies. like, I was so green. I had not done a lot of on-camera work before. I'd done a lot of stage. And so wow. it was easier for me to adjust having to stare into the camera than those of you who had done a lot of on-camera things and were taught never to look into the lens. So I didn't have, it's funny because like I feel it now when I go back and forth, the feeling of like, oh, I'm supposed to be looking directly into the lens. But I didn't have it then because I didn't have any other experience and the Lizzie Bennett Diaries was so much of like a training ground for me because you go to an on-camera class and they film you and then you watch yourself and you go oh and that happened to me while thousands of people were watching me and I went oh wow that that's got to be an experience because that I mean yeah every actor that transfers to doing on-camera work goes through seeing themselves on camera for the first time and what your internal dialogue is of like how that's going for you because you most people are not comfortable watching themselves and I can't imagine being in that <laughs> circumstance of like I'm watching myself while all of these other people are watching me that's that's wow I didn't know that about your journey and I said at the time that I would watch every episode three times and the first time was just to like get over how much I hated watching myself how much I was like I can't believe my sure. hair looks like that why is my face doing that oh my god ah uh, uh, and then the second time through, all I could really watch was my performance. So then I was like, basically, like the first one was to judge my appearance. And the second one was to judge my performance. And by the third one, I could actually like take in what was happening on the show. Wow. Wow. But I did watch, I, at the time I watched all of them a lot. I would very quickly be able to realize that something that I thought I was doing didn't communicate, didn't translate. Interesting. And how I could do it better. And it's funny because you, you talked about how like you were trying to be bad at vlogging by like turning away. I, I do a lot of profile stuff in the show because I cared much more about connecting with my scene partner. And right. I yeah. was not actually playing out to camera as much. And I eventually learned that I needed to like have my feeling over here so that the audience could see it. Right. And then come back. Uh, and so it's funny, like I came from theater, you'd think I'd know how to cheat out, but I, I was 
just like really into my scene partner and connecting and that feeling like sure. authentic and good. But I, I did not always know how to include the audience. And I, I learned over the course of the, the show. Very much wow. So. I remember yeah. watching them, the episode several times. Um, I think it was more like I had never been in a position to be able to read comments on my mm, own mm-hmm. performances. And so luckily we had a really supportive fan base watching this show. So the comments were like really positive. Like we did not have a lot of people trolling the comment section. I, I From what I remember, it was yeah, an actually healthy experience. Uh, so then it's like, later in life like going into other things and reading like actual troll comments about one's work was like really really sad and scary and and it like it's um but this environment it was like kind of part of it because like we were all sort of in it together interacting with each other and like we as the actors were watching all of the transmedia as well because we didn't know how they were going to do I didn't we didn't know in advance yeah and so Uh, yeah it was that was um that was cool. And then like watching each other's episodes, the ones that we weren't in, which I, I enjoyed doing of like getting to actually be like an audience member of the show. Cause I wasn't in everyone like you were. And well, and you know, you know I've, I've already said this, but that's why I loved episode, you know, 15 so much. Cause that's the first time I could watch the show without <laughs> watching myself. And it was very that's freeing. Wild. It was very freeing. Speaking of watching ourselves, do you want to? Oh yeah. Let's do it again. <laughs> Always want to. The freeze frames are oh favorite. so phenomenal. <laughs> First of all, I would like to say that I love my sister Jane. I oh really yeah, I love you. <laughs> what are you about to say? This episode is called "25 Douchebags and a Gentleman." So, um, <laughs> but rather, and I'm so happy to be with someone I'm married to with who. She's not as bad I guess as that's how I describe <laughs> people at the at the bar. And maybe part. Yeah, where are I we in the story? know this shirt um well you'll see we i just met a certain uh, someone Um, oh are we in are we in wickham territory we are about to i we're not gonna west does not show up for a while but this is the first time that um so yeah i was so proud of with my sister that he becomes a presence (laughs) wow one of the many many invisible men one of the yeah like a casting need was like somebody that had a convincing body that we were describing <laughs> yeah we were like we need you to be hot like really really hot <laughs> oh you know someone stole that skirt like i really yeah at an That's audition too bad. i wore that adi- that to a commercial audition and you um, and you took it off and i changed in the bathroom <laughs> Oh, and like left it and then never got that back. That was a prize. Oh. Yeah, oh, I'm so sorry. Well, it's immortalized here with this adorable outfit you've put together. Oh, You're being the responsible older sister. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Here I am. I forgot. Wait. Genetic, wait. generic swim guy. This is generic swim guy. I'm like, wait, is this yeah, no. your Wickham impression? Because I don't remember. <laughs> no, for Wickham, I'm, I'm nicer. But now I am going to like not touch your boobs and you touch your collarbone <laughs> <laughs> i really should have just gone for the boobs i don't like that would be the funnier bit maybe i didn't feel like i knew you well enough right. obviously now but i would now, just go for the boobs yeah let's go for it now <laughs> um wait so do you wear this you wear the swim goggles for wickham though but you're not wearing wearing them. they're like on your head i don't remember I think, what's your outfit I think they're, for wickham we'll find out i think they're on top of my head um, you choose your cosplay looks or was it kind of like decided for you uh for the initial stuff bernie and i went to a thrift store together and i helped like we like gathered things together the men's hats i think were bernie's but like the mama bennett stuff the flower for jane like i found that stuff um look now you're me you oh no i'm do- we're, we're doing nothing for Oh, no, they're around my neck. There they are. Very subtle, the Wickham. Very subtle. Oh. But wait, I want to hear you be me. I didn't think that happened except for the period thing. Oh, Jane, such a bad actor. I love it. Oh, but you're, no, because you're the most precious, Darcy. So you're, you're just, I think you're awkward about being me in front of me. I think you don't know how to Naturally, impersonate yeah. me. I don't want to, like, offend you as Jane. 
Right. As, whereas like, I just go like, I'm Jane. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think I'd serve it back to you, you know? Mm -hmm. I do wonder if Jane would, I mean, it's, it, it does make Jane feel like quite the innocent that she's like, oh, everybody at the bar was just trying to be helpful. And it's like, no, they were trying to grope me. Mm. Oh God, that seems problematic. But you're so excited. You're, you know, you're all cozy with Bing. You're so excited that I maybe have. I'm like all about the summer. love. Yeah. You are all about the love. I mean, you know, this, this is a romance story that we really um, dug into the sister relationships in. Which is like Darcy? Wow. Hmm. <laughs> Mm, wow. you, you may smoking hot that's what we were looking for wow oh my god Lizzie may not have the best judgment about you, th you think about that it's yeah. it's kind of sad actually <laughs> I mean it's pride right she gets insulted by Darcy and she cannot get over it but yeah not to not to see through Wickham is also a, a, a different level of experience. None of these, none of these young women seem to have ex had a lot of experience around men. Yeah, because I, it's like I watched that and I'm like, it's interesting from a sis big sister component of like that I wasn't at all concerned about with him in the beginning. Like there's no radar at all. He very gentlemanly, you know, puts his coat over a wet thing. But like the fact that very you didn't see anything wrong with the like, other guys. <laughs> Also, are we still using douchebag as an insult? I don't know. I feel like um, <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like that's that's gone now. I think we're done with that one. Hey, this is a pickup because I forgot to look at the comments with Laura, and I've noticed that if I don't look at the comments, you comment. They're just all about Wickham, <laughs> understandably. Grace Reed says, "What's his name? George Wickham." Every rewatcher and Austin fan reels back in horror, hissing at their computer screen. Christine Stevenson says, "I know he's a big part of the story, but every time I read slash hear George Wickham's name or dialogue, especially portrayed out of light, I seethe." Tanya M says, "Darcy still smacking his head on the desk while watching this. That is also about Wickham." Lizzie W says, Jane, what's his name? Lizzie, George Wickham, me gasps. OMG, no, cringes covers head. Arg, curls up in a ball. Can he not groans? Just no. That was very evocative. Uh, Cass says, rewatchers of people who read the book can feel it coming, but they still want to exercise the computer when they hear George Wickham's name. And it just goes on. It just goes on like that. It's everybody. So wait, this one says, Freya Cooper says this video should be called 25 Douchebags and the King Douche. King Douche. All right. So uh, that's that's the comments. Y'all do not care for Wickham, which is a testament to the people who created that storyline, I give credit there to Mary Kate for making you fall in love with Lydia, Rachel for writing the arc, and Wes for luring you in with his charm and handsomeness, and then, mm. but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So put that away for now. Pack up your anger and hang on to it. Now back to our regularly scheduled with Laura Park. I'm very sad to hear about about your beautiful skirt, but it is very fun to see you wearing this very shirt. Yes. Um, which which we did just randomly have you wear. Like <laughs> I wore this in the first round and um, first round of episodes. We had not chosen a like costume for Lizzie, and so we of the shirts just on a whim picked this one, and here we are, ten years later. Wow. Uh, but so then that became the Lizzie shirt, and I think you're the one who wore it the most. Am I? I mean, at least I, there's at least two. Does Mary Kate play me? Yeah. She might. Yeah, I think she does. But, you know, ro romance a, a Bruin for all of us, I guess. <laughs> romance a Bruin for all of us. Ooh. Well, thank you for joining me so much uh, again for this episode, and um, I look forward to having you back. Can't wait. And to those of you 
who are not Laura, 